Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Our friend Mark Piegza from Synergy Home Care has joined me, and it's good to see you. You too, Bessie. Thank yeah. you. So let's talk a little bit about, I, you know, what you guys do, the difference between your services and home, you know, and healthcare and home care and all those kinds of things. Because you know, you, people I think use them interchangeably, but they're not exactly interchangeable. Yeah, that's correct. We often hear us refer to as home health and vice versa, and we're really not a home health provider. And the differences are that um, we're providing home care services, so we're really helping people with activities of daily living, things that are non-medical in nature. We often work with home health providers hand in hand, so they may be in helping a client, um, and they provide rehab services, whether it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. They'll have a nurse come in to check vitals or do wound care, and then we work around that, so we're providing that continuity of care with everything else they need. Okay. And so that was kind of my next question, which you already segued into, is how you do work with other health professionals, including things like hospice. So I'm assuming you kind of go hand in hand with them as well. Absolutely. So we try to have great relationships with all the different types of providers of uh, care in our community, including hospice. And so hospice will obviously help people manage their end of life situation in a very compassionate way, but they're not there continuously. They may have fun an aide that comes in a few times a week to help with a, a bath or shower. And then they have a nurse come in um, three, four, five times a week. But then you have this whole gap that right. no one's in the home unless right. unless it's family members. So if they need help with having their loved one toileted or bathed or, you know, just cleaning up around the home, that sort of thing, we fill in all those gaps. Okay. And, um, you know, it's kind of an, it's obviously it's an emotional subject. It's something that somebody may not want to admit that they need, but how do we kind of determine when it's time for us to have that help or time for our family member to have that help? Sure. So I think for the individual, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you either can't do things that you used to do, or maybe there's some things you just don't like to do anymore. <laughs> so maybe you don't like to clean up around the home or you don't like to make your own meals. That may be a time where it's, it's time to get someone in the home to start helping. And then you kind of manage your care going forward. Maybe your needs increase over time. If you're a family member, and a lot of times we have um, older people who live here and their family is elsewhere. Right. And so they come down for Christmas or they come down during the summer and they maybe see that their parents you know, aren't doing things like they used to, or maybe things are dirty, they're cluttered, mm -hmm. um, they're not organized. Maybe they're be becoming more forgetful. That, those are all telltale signs that maybe you know, your parents need some help and it's really time to get someone in the home. And this is kind of a, a step that, you know, maybe prevents them ha from having to go into assisted living, for example, and be able to stay in the comfort of their home. And you kind of provide those things that they can't do as well. Absolutely. And, you know, at some point it might be time for assisted living for them if they feel like they really need uh, to be in a place where there are other people around and they're getting all their meals provided and that sort of thing. But a lot of times we're a great transition where people yeah. can stay in their homes for as long as they want. Right. And we can provide all those uh, services that they may need help with or they just don't want to do anymore. So it is a great transition. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about payment structure because I know I'm sure people are maybe hesitant to call because you know, really I think the perception is, is that it's really expensive to have these kinds of services. So tell us a little bit about how people can pay for your services. Sure, and oftentimes it's not that expensive depending on how many hours you need during the week. Um, and it can be a great alternative, for example, to going into assisted living. Maybe right. you just need a few hours a day here and there to help out. It can be very manageable. We are primarily a private pay service. Um, unlike home health where that's Medicare reimbursed primarily, right. we don't, uh, Medicare doesn't pay for private duty home care services, but there are alternatives to it. So if you're a veteran or a spouse of a veteran, there are several different VA programs and we work with them, we're okay. VA registered. Um, Long-term care insurance is actually a, a great thing. We have a lot of clients who years ago, they bought long-term care policies right. and they've paid off really well. We work with those all the time. We help clients facilitate a claim and then help them through the reimbursement process. So those are great avenues. We also work with the community. So there's some community funding okay. for these types of services. Right. Yep. And we can point people in the right direction. We can help them through those processes. So there are some alternatives to private pay, but it is primarily a private pay business. Well, thank you, Mark. It's always good to see you, and it's always fantastic information. So thank you for what you're doing in the community. We appreciate it. And we'll be right back with more Talk of the Town.